Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monday Night Ignite. And today we're talking, we're on the business section of the call. And Cindy Wiggins is going to be speaking to us. Uh, Cindy is a dear friend of mine, and she has been with Young Living for a little over 14 years. Uh, she's a fellow uh, woman in Christ here. She has how many? Uh, she has seven grandchildren, five uh, children. She loves working vendor shows, uh, has a store um, that she works out of called My Oily Cottage. It's here in Michigan, in the Canterbury Village. Very nice, quaint little uh, section here. And I'm very excited for her to speak and share tonight because she definitely has a heart for people, for young living. She's an excellent businesswoman. I've learned a lot from her and still do on a regular basis. And uh, it's just a great way to see authentically how people um, can get hooked up with young living. And the one thing that if you're, I love this word, it's called coachable. If you think you know everything, that's going to be a rough thing for you because I promise you there's something you can learn from her and we can learn from all people. So open your minds to be coachable to what she has to say. And it's really what she told me once. And that was just very um, amazing is, is listening to what someone is saying versus my agenda of teaching them. And I overload people to the max. Okay. I'm trying not to. Cindy just told me the other day. So I'm like, I want you to teach them about toxins and how this isn't good and suppositories and all these different things. So she's like, stop talking and just listen. And so you will hear and learn so much from her if you can do that as well, if you're like me. So Cindy, uh, please take it away. And um, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. Um, that is a fact. We sometimes talk too much because we have our own personal agenda. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So you have to forgive me for two things. Number one, Stacy did almost break my arm to make me do this call for real. Like this is not my comfort zone <clears throat> at all. Number two, I have a cold. So I am at the end of it. So it's okay, we'll get through it. But if I start hacking and coughing, Stacy's gonna step in. She's got all my notes. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for Stacy, I would not be doing this call, not only because she twisted my arm, but because she did all my notes for me. So. Here we go. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to talk about is the four different stages. Stace, let's go to the next part, next stage, next, there we go. So for me, there was four stages that I had to go through to achieve the rank of diamond. I think everybody's going to be on their own path. So you just have to figure out what that is going to be for you. The first stage is um, passing out CDs. So I had a wonderful teacher that challenged me to pass out 10 CDs a day for 30 days. Yes, that seems like it's overwhelming, but it is doable. So um, she challenged me and here's the thing, you have to decide for yourself, see how I just jump into things. You have to decide for yourself that you are ready to take on this challenge because if you're not ready to take on this challenge to yourself, to that self-commitment, you are not gonna do it, you will give up. So she challenged me to pass out CDs every single day for 10 days. And once I was willing to commit to myself to do this, I was able to do it. But here's the thing that you have to remember. If you're gonna to commit to yourself, you're going to know that you didn't do it. So don't commit unless you're really, really willing to do it. So what I did is I started out in the grocery stores. I'd go down to, I'd go into the grocery store and I would search carts and I would see somebody and see what they had in their carts and if they had anything organic, no matter what it was, I would say, okay. So let's say they have organic bananas in the cart. I would look at the, the cart and I see the organic bananas and I'm like, hmm, they must have something in common with me. So I would say, hey, I noticed that you have organic bananas there. Isn't it awesome that our store has so many organic things? Aren't you grateful for that? Or whatever I would say. It's a little difficult doing an ad lib way here right now, but I would say something in that uh, respect so that they would be able to get a conversation going with me or I with them. So the, the point here is you have to listen. You have to take a minute and if they respond back to you, yeah, I love the store because they, they give so many organic options here. So then you know that you can have a conversation with them. But if they shut you down, don't continue to try to have a conversation with them because then you're showing them no respect. 
So the key here is to continue to listen. So what I would do is every day I would go into the store and I would search for people. And the first time I did it, it took me three hours for real, three hours to pass out 10 CDs. Now I'm not a shy person. I've ran restaurants. I have had five kids. I am, you know, have been to baseball parks for like ever. And, you know, all the things that most moms do. So I'm really not a shy person. However, this took me out of my comfort zone. So when I would go in the grocery store, like I said, I would look to see who has something organic in the cart. And if they had something like bananas, I would say, oh, that's awesome. So that opens the door for the conversation. Now, once I opened the door for the conversation, I definitely had to listen to what they were saying. There is a point when you just need to give them your CD or current day, a piece of literature, whatever that may be. So you wanna give them something to take home. But remember, it's not about the, re the end result. So here, here's the thing, when we're going to go start doing this, we have to remember that we're new at this. It's the beginning, it's the first time that we're doing this. Every one of us wants to have that great close today. As soon as I hand somebody something, I want them to say, yeah, I want your business, but that's not reality. We all have to go through the growing pains. So hand them that CD, did it again and again and again. Every day I would go in 10 CDs a day. Now, it was very challenging for several reasons. Number one, at that point in my life, I ran a restaurant. Um, so I was the manager, a liaison between the, from the house and the back of the house. So my job was very demanding. It was also very long hours. An average day for me was about 14 hours in those days. Thank goodness I don't have to do that anymore. I also had to do it in high heels, which made it extremely tiring by the end of the day. However, I would pass out CDs before I would go to work in the grocery store. And then if I did not complete that task, I would be in the grocery store at 2 a.m. passing out CDs. Not fun, but remember, it wasn't about the result. It was about the commitment I made to myself. So here's when you have to think really long and, long and hard. Do I have what it takes to commit to myself to do what is needed to do this job? Now, sometimes we want to think of network marketing as, oh, it's just a part-time little something, which it can be for some people. But if you're wanting a full-time income, you have to think of it as a full-time job. Now, I wasn't ready at that point to put hours in because I was in all those hours. But I knew that in the future, this is what I wanted to do. So I had to do what it took to get there. So what it took was 10 CDs a day for 30 days. Hmm, dang, that could be dis discouraging from time to time, couldn't it? No, it wasn't. Because what I did is I did it and I did it and I did it over and over again, knowing that I wasn't looking for the result. I was looking for my own personal commitment and could I do what I challenged myself to do? Well, guess what? I did that for about 20 days. I got good at it. I got so good at it. Did I tell you? I'm not sure because I don't remember what I already said. But did I tell you that took me three hours the first day, the first actually little while, actually the first day it took me three hours to pass out 10 CDs. After that, I got a little bit better and a little bit better. But by day 20, maybe, maybe 17, 20, I could pass out 10 CDs in 15 minutes. I knew what I was looking for. I knew what to do. I knew where I was going. I knew what my plan was. I knew what my goal was. My goal wasn't the end result. My goal was the discipline for myself, the commitment I made to myself. Remember, you will know if you've lied to yourself. You will know if you've disappointed yourself. You will know if you did not complete what you said you were going to do. So having said that, around those same time, I still got a little discouraged. I'm like, dang it. I passed out all these CDs and have had no results. So I called the person who told me to do this, which I'm very grateful for her. She told me to do this. I called her and she said, hmm, thought you, had, you, thought you challenged yourself and you were going to go out and do this. I said, yeah, but I'm really not getting anything out of it. I know I'm doing it every single day, but I'm, I'm not achieving anything. She said, keep doing it. 
Like, okay. So when you do this, make sure you have a buddy. Make sure you have an accountable buddy that's going to say, no, nope, get out there and do it again. Go do it again. Go do it again. Because we, we want to whine to ourselves. Even with that commitment, we still want to whine to ourselves. So anyways, I continued. I continued on. I got really good at it. Like I said, I could do about 15 and I could do about 10 and 15 minutes. And then camp come day 20, 24, somewhere in there. Man, I was so shocked. I got a call back. That was amazing. I was so thrilled. Matter of fact, I got two people the same day. I was so like, unbelievable. This is actually working. However, here was the problem. I didn't know what to do with the call when I got a call back. I froze and I said, um, this gal, she wanted to come out immediately. And I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, um, I'll call you back tomorrow. So, <laughs> so I was so unaware of what the results were going to bring because I had never focused on it. I didn't know what to do with it when it came. But you know what? That was pretty amazing. It taught me many lessons. It taught me to be prepared. But it also taught me it was okay because I had set my focus and my goal and I was achieving that. The result was a bonus. So that passing OCDs out at that point took me to silver. I had two people that I met in the same grocery store the same day, actually it might've been two days different or so. And they both steadily went down the road together at the same level at the same time. So that was amazing. So I challenge you right now, whatever it is that you can pass out, whatever literature you want. Stacy and I found some good stuff when we were in, uh, yeah, when we were in convention just recently. Get a piece of literature. Make sure that you have your name, your number, all your information on it, and just go do it. In the beginning, you're going to be afraid. I'm not going to tell you you're not. You're going to feel awkward. You're going to feel out of your comfort zone. But just like tonight, this is totally out of my comfort zone. You got to step out of your comfort zone to make that grow. Stacy, I see you smiling and I want to like slap that smile off you because you make me do this all the time. <laughs> We're going to definitely get Cindy out of her comfort zone again and like next month and she can do another. <laughs> yeah, I have two questions for you. So if someone said they didn't want the CD or looked hesitant, would you, I think I, you told me that you tell them to pass it on to someone else if they didn't want it. Is that correct or? So, so when you're passing on a piece of literature, let me assure you, most people, and you can do it with your friend right now, if you're sent by somebody, do it with your husband, I don't care who you do with it, hand them something, they're going to take it. Almost always. And if they don't, it's okay. Who cares? You don't know them anyway. So that's, so that's why you have to make the goal, the item that you're passing out, not the end result. Do you think that people didn't say, oh, I don't want your stuff? Of course they did. The first time they did it, I was probably mortified and wanted to stop doing it. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't because of that commitment. If you don't commit to yourself, you're not going to do this. And I don't want to hear anybody say, well, you know what? I work really long hours. Let me tell you something. I worked long hours. And if any of you have worked 12 hours in a restaurant in high heels, then we can talk about it. Because like I said, I would do it before work. And if I didn't do it, I would do it at 2 a.m. in the morning, go into a grocery store. I almost said where I went, but go into a grocery store and do it. And there's not a lot of people in that grocery store. So I assure you, I did the best job that I could do to pass it out before mm -hmm. that night. Okay. <clears throat> I think a lot of people get hooked on um, the rejection part of it, which you just went over briefly. Um, and not, the main thing is not taking it personal, right? Well, I think that, not taking it personal because they yeah, don't even know you, they don't know what you're talking about. Right. I think in the beginning, we all take rejection personal. I mean, the first time your boyfriend like dumped you, didn't you take it personal? Of course, we're going to take a, reject, a rejection personal. The first time that somebody didn't like look at you when you thought you were being cute, of course, you're going to take it personal. Who cares? You're going to take it personal, but that's the learning curve. If you, if, if you don't get out of your comfort, comfort zone, like you think I'm comfortable on this? No, but I'm going to do it anyways. Are some people going to say, gosh, she's a diamond and she talks like that? Yep. It's okay. 
don't be afraid of rejection. Every time we get rejected, we learn how to do it better. I'm okay with that. You have to become okay with it. And if anybody tells you this is not sales, you're wrong. It is sales. This is what we do. This is what we do for a living. And I embrace it 100%. I embrace MLM 100%. I embrace all of it 100%. But being a salesman doesn't mean you have to be a car salesman. There is a difference. I'm a good salesman. I'm good at what I do. I've honed that down. I'm good at it. And I love it because I've embraced it. I've embraced the process. Okay. So Stacy's going to keep me on track and move me to the next one because I will just I will just rattle on. All right, let's go to the home classes. Okay, so this so that took me to silver. That was amazing. And back in the day, we had a different setup, so it was a little bit different how you got to silver. But I got there anyway, and very quickly I was able to get to gold. I got to gold for doing home classes. Now, once again, that same person who um, was so gracious to come and um, challenge me on passing those 10 CDs out a day. She also was very generous to come to my home and she taught amazingly well. Her name is Shannon Hudson. She did such a, a fantastic job coming into my home every week and teaching my people. You see, I am a teacher, just I'm not grand and getting up in front of everybody. I can teach. Um, when I was in the restaurant business, I always could teach because I had a glass of wine in my hand when I had to do so. So I could teach two, two 300 people. But doing this is a little bit different. Um, so Shannon would come in my home and she would teach every single week to my people. And that was amazing. Um, I began to understand the whole way that Young Living worked. Um, I began to do make and takes. I began to go do classes myself. Here's an, a thing that Shannon did teach me uh, that I think is very important that I think many of us forget. I'm gonna get a little bit more meat of it in just a few minutes, but I, I wanna share a couple of things. Those of us who do classes for ourselves or for others, we always feel a bit of rejection or a bit of disappointment for the people that said they were going to be there and didn't show up. I know you felt it, I know I felt it, but I'm gonna tell you what Shannon did. She would come to my house and she lived uh, 45 minutes away. She would come to my house, her and Brian, and when people didn't show up, she would say, you know what, it's okay. That just gives us time to learn about you, learn about your goals and help you succeed. So we don't worry about those who didn't show, we only worry, not worry, we only concern ourselves and be gracious and, and pay attention to those who did show. So when people are coming to your house, don't talk about those who didn't show. You can call them tomorrow and say, hey, I missed you. I wish you would have been there. Guess what? I'm going to do a class next week here as well. You think you can make it then. But really, 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 really be gracious to the people that came. Spend time with them honor them because they are who is important at the moment for you. I've heard too many times people talking about the guy that didn't show up because let me tell you in this business, not one single person is going to make your business for you. The only one that's going to make your business for you is you. Everyone else is just a bonus. You do your job and you do it well and you do it well again and you keep doing it well, and you keep getting it better and better and better, you're gonna achieve your goals. Okay, so do make and takes, do classes, whether you teach them or whether you have someone else teach them, and do, go do home classes with someone else so that you can help them learn. The goal here is to fill your calendar. Okay, I have notes, thank goodness for that. Okay, let's go on to Vindy. Bending. Okay, guys, I got to get a drink. I don't want to start coughing. Drink of water, by the way. Okay, bending. Okay, bending is a, a beast of its own. Um, when I was doing home classes, I'm thinking, okay, you know, I like these home classes, but it's just not quite enough for me. I need more. So I started doing Vendor shows. 
When I first started, I did small vendor shows because I thought that's all I could afford. Um, some small vendor shows are amazing because all you need to do is meet one person and they help you totally build a team, right? But sometimes you have better luck at the bigger vendor shows. Yes, the bigger vendor shows cost more money. Well, this is how it works, but it's okay. Start small, get your feet wet, get your, get your verbiage down, um, get your comfort zone, and then you can go into the bigger shows. At least that's what I did. So when you set up a table, because the table setup is so important, I've seen vending that they just have stuff everywhere or they don't have a focus on one thing. We are the most of us ADD and we can jump from one thing to the next. We need to have a center focus. So until recently, I think it's been a year, maybe not even quite a year, we could only sign people up with a PSK, which I know now is a bundle, but forgive me, it's gonna be PSK for tonight. So we could only sign up people with a PSK. Um, so my PSK was the premium starter kit right there smack dab in the middle of the table. And let's talk about diffusing why we're there. Wait, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here for just a second because your table is so important to set up. You keep your PSK right in the middle. You keep your thieves to the right. You, and the, to the left of that, usually depending on, the, depending on the space that I had, you have your Ninja Red. Now, some people can fo focus solely on Ninja Red. Some people can focus solely on thieves. I don't care what you focus on, just make a focus. I always had three center focuses. At the vendor table, I also would make sure that I had lava bracelets because when women will always lava bracelets, meaning that you can put the oils right on the lava and they were cheap, five bucks, who cares? But women would always, will always come up to the table where there's jewelry. I don't care what you have up there, women will come for that jewelry. So they'll stand there and they will play with that jewelry. They'll look at it and it will be an amazing opportunity for you to open up a conversation. So let's go back to the vendor table first though. So on that vendor table, on, on um, you have your diffuser going. We want to make sure that when you put the oil drops in the diffuser, you're not stingy with those oil drops. So I don't care how many you put, just don't put three to five. Best for home use. When we're working in a space like this, we need a lot of oil. Now I'm not talking 30, 40 drops, I'm talking 10 to 15 drops. So what you wanna do is you wanna put those oils in there. Here's the thing, it's a big space. You want people to smell you everywhere. You want them to follow their nose and figure out where this amazing smell is coming from. Don't be stingy, put lots of drops in that oil, or lots of drops in that diffuser. So at my vendor table, I have the setup like that. You've got your, your bracelets, which the bracelets is amazing. It can, help, it can help with the cost of the table. So make sure you have, throw those bracelets out there. Don't make a dig, big deal about them. They are very um, insignificant. Who cares? Just put them on the table so you have something to have conversation. And just to let me know what I do with those bracelets, when someone does join me, after the fact, after they join me, I give them a bracelet. And do you know why I do that? I do that so they're thinking, wow, it just wasn't about the sell. She's so generous after. So, so think how that sets on them. They've already made the purchase. They've already bought it. They're getting ready to leave. And you say, hey, by the way, which one of these do you like? And they say, oh, I like the one with all the colors on it. Hey, go ahead and take it with you. Want to put a little oil on that so you can enjoy it today while you're at the show? Guess what that does for their mind? All of a sudden, not only do they have trust for you right this minute, they have established trust with you for always because you just gave them something without receiving something from it. Just an after afterthought and they'll enjoy it. Okay, I'm gonna get sidetracked. So let me, let me keep going here. Okay. Now, um, let me touch base on this too right, right quickly while I'm looking at my notes. So when you have product, extra product, I always have, you can see over here on the right, I always have extra product with me. And the reason for that is, is because I want to help pay for my vendor show. 
I want to make sure that I am able to give this um, a fair opportunity because I don't want to go home owing anything. So I always have um, stuff there. Um, legally, you can sell your stuff as long as you have it for cost plus 10%. So I don't care how much stuff you have, you can have as many, as much stuff as you want or as little. I think the more is merrier. To create um, a little bit more interest at my table, I also have a thieves bottle. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> okay, I say that because Heidi might um, get asked to speak here in a minute. Hi, Heidi has taken my vendor shows on and she has done an amazing job. So if we can unmute Heidi for a minute, that would be great in just a second. Can you do that, Stace? Okay, awesome. Heidi, you gonna be ready? <laughs> Sorry, Heidi. Okay, but let me, talk, let me talk real quick about the thieves. So what I also do is I offer a cap full of thieves in a bottle when they purchase a 14 ounce bottle of Thieves Cleaner. So a lot of people have just purchased that bottle and that's okay, it's awesome. Go ahead and take it home with you, enjoy it. Make sure that you have it labeled, make sure that you have your phone number, your name on it so that when they run out of that Thieves, you know they're gonna want more, so they're gonna contact you. But what happens here is that opens the door so that you can talk to them about the starter kit, the Thieves starter kit. More often than not, once I place the value on um, the thieves itself, but then place the value on the whole kit, most people are gonna go ahead and say, why would I just buy a bottle when I can buy all of this? Okay, Heidi, at this point, I'd love to ask you um, a little bit of your experience that you've gone through at the vendor shows. Go ahead. Hang on, guys. Stacy's unmuting Heidi. She should be able to unmute herself. Heidi, can you hit unmute? I can. Sorry about right. that. <laughs> oh, no worries. Okay, Hi. Heidi. So I know that you took my vendor shows over uh, a little while back. And can you tell us your experience, especially in April? Because I'm so proud of you. So I started, my first show was in November and it was just a dive in and um, I took what little things I had with me. I learned a lot. And after that show is when I spoke with you and got lots of wonderful tips. Um, it, it's truly a like you said, the listening to people, which is a skill that I am learning. Um, and, and just remembering that I am there to sell um, and not being afraid of that fact. Um, but just having fun with it too, just enjoying talking with people and just sharing what, what you love. Awesome. So, so tell us, because I, I think this is amazing. How many people did you sign up in April? Um, 22. It was a group effort. I had a couple of friends with me that were a huge help. Um, and uh, it, it was a very big confidence booster. And just, it, it was, it was wonderful. And a lot of it was listening to a lot of the tips that you're sharing and, and putting into practice um, things that I've learned. Okay, thank you, Heidi, for sharing. I appreciate that. She did an amazing job. And you know, no matter what we do, it's always a group effort. I would love to say any of this I did by myself, but I didn't. It's always a group effort. Like tonight, <laughs> without Stacy and Brittany, this wouldn't be me doing this. This is Stacy telling me to move forward. Okay, so let's talk about what I do when people walk up to the table. So I do the same thing every single time. I, I, when they come up to the table, I naturally greet them by saying, hey, how's it going? Or whatever I may say at the moment. So here's the thing, you need to wait. Don't like start just babbling on, which we all kind of, at least I do, I have the instinct to just start talking. Don't do that. Step back and wait. They will make eye contact with you and then they will also greet you. At that point, like they'll say, oh, it's going well, how are you doing? I'll say, I'm doing great, thanks. 
immediately, I don't wait. I don't, I don't give them time. I immediately say, are you familiar with us? So here's the thing, you're, you're asking a question. Most people when ask a question, will turn around and respond to you. So they will look at around, they kind of like stumble around. And if they know it's Young Living, they'll say, oh yeah, I'm familiar with Young Living, fantastic. If they don't, they will say verbatim, uh, who is us? Really, that's what they say. Sometimes they may say, well, who are you? But most of the time, because I said, are you familiar with us? They will say back to me, who is us? So I will let them know we are Young Living Essential Oils. So they kind of look at me with that, oh, well, I'm really not familiar with you. So at, at this point, that's what I'm looking for. Are, are you familiar with us? Opens that whole thing wide open because they're going to respond to you. Um, yes, I am. Yes, my friend has this. Uh, no, I've never heard of you. Um, yeah, I've heard a little bit about oils. You're going to establish their interest level. So at that point, when they're looking at you and they say, um, well, who is us? And I say, well, we're Young Living Essential Oils. They're going to respond back to me. Oh, well, not really. I do use oils, but you know, I'm not really that familiar with you. <clears throat> so here's the thing. At that point, you wanna really listen to what they're saying because what our problem is, is we, we don't listen. We are so wanting our own agenda that we don't hear what they're saying. They're telling us, yes, um, I've heard about oils. No, I'm not familiar with you. No, I don't have a friend that sells them or any of the, of, of the above. That's key. I can probably do a, a close within minutes after that, after that small little conversation because they told me where they were in life as far as the oils go. So I'm not necessarily looking for the level of interest. I'm really looking for where they are in life. If I can meet them where they are, and if I can establish a trust with them, then I can make that sale. So what most people do is when somebody comes up to the table, they say, hi, how are you? And then they just start talking. They talk way too much or they just stand there with their arms folded. Oh, pet peeve of mine, don't ever, ever be on your cell phone when you're at a vendor show. Absolutely huge pet peeve. I will not buy from a vendor personally that is on their cell phone. However, I, a, a little bit of a side note. There are occasions when we all have to be on the cell phone. Remove yourself from the booth. Don't let anybody that's in your booth be on the cell phone either. But if there is an occasion that you do need to be on, in, on your cell phone, when someone walks up to the table, explain yourself and apologize. If, if you're working with someone and you're looking up a number or something for that person, also explain it to the new person that just walked up to the table. Cell phones is an immediate turn off to us mentally. Okay, back to, the, back to where I was. So somebody walks up the table, I, I ask them if they've ever heard of us. They say, um, uh, no, not really, but I use other oils, I've used these oils. That opens the opportunity for education. Really? Well, you know, there is a huge difference between oils that you buy at, at um, the local drugstore and our oils. So of course I have a whole spiel that I go into, but now is not the time. The time right now is to be, is to just get to it. You have to understand there are red flags thrown if you don't get right to it. So if, if someone walks up to my table and I'm pretending like I'm not trying to sell them something, guess what, that throws a red flag, I'm not ready to mirror yet, Stacy. That throws a red flag at them simply because I've, I've established dishonesty. Nobody wants to work with somebody that they feel that they're being dishonest with them. That's why I'm gonna tell you right now, get to it. Don't wait, 
get to it. I'm here to sell you something. I am proud of what I sell. I am very thrilled that I have the opportunity, if you allow me, to share this with you. If you go in there with that attitude, you will be successful. If you go in there with the attitude that, oh, you know, maybe you might want to buy this. I'm really not sure. I'm going to let you talk first. I'm really not sure what to do. You've established this trust. If you go in there bombarding with us, listen, we have the best thing on the planet Earth and we're going to, we're a miracle cure and you're going to get better tomorrow. You bombarded them and you've also established dishonesty. I don't do any of that, but I do get right to it. I talk to them. I listen to them. I take my time with them. Here is when I begin to mirror them. What do I mean by that? Okay, so that's why. Next slide. Here is when I begin, be, begin to mirror them. What do I mean? So if someone comes up to my table and I've already said, hey, how's it going? Um, is everything going well? We get to talking about the oils just slightly. Um, and they're really quiet. I am not going to be my loud, boisterous self. I'm going to be a little bit shyer. I'm going to pull a Heidi and I'm going to be like set back and a little bit reserved and wait just a minute. But if someone comes up and says, hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's so hot in here. I'm going to say, you, you're not just kidding it's so hot in here. It's just unbelievably hot. So I'm going to mirror there. I'm going to still be my own personal personality, but I'm going to mirror their level of excitement. Nobody wants to talk about being sick in a high pitched, high, strong, excited voice, but nobody wants to talk about being not sick in a oh, somber voice. So we have to mirror what they're doing. Be yourself, but mirror their level of interest, their level of excitement, I guess you would say. Okay, everyone get out the peppermint. I hope you all have one. So everyone get the peppermint out. Stace, I need the camera for just a minute. Uh oh, sorry guys, that's my phone. Okay, so here's what I'd like you, everyone to do. Pick your peppermint up, right? Y'all got peppermint? Here's what I do every time. Okay, so, so my person's at the vendor table and they're saying, um, uh, yes, I've heard of oils. I'm like, oh, awesome. Have you ever tried our peppermint? Well, no. Well, let's do it. Give me your hand. I want everybody to take your hand out. One drop. One drop only. Take your drop of peppermint. Do this. Turn it in your hand. Cup it. Cup it so you have a little hole. Now you can listen. Listen. This whole process is important. This gives them time to, to really feel it. So here's what we're going to do. And I'm going to do it with you. And I tell them this. We're gonna go ahead and breathe in three times through your mouth. Oh, don't you feel that? Feel your lungs opening. Isn't it amazing? Three times. Listen, don't get out of the eyes. They'll burn like the Dickens, I promise you. It won't cause any damage, but it will burn like the Dickens. And do it three times. Okay, now, now we're gonna go through the nose. Ready? Not the mouth, the nose. Breathe that in. It's gonna open that whole sinus cavity. You feel that? I feel it, do you feel it? Isn't that amazing? You can breathe so much better. Now listen, I, I'm not done with you. Take the rest of it, go ahead. I put all over those sore muscles. I know you have them. We all have them. Go ahead, wipe them all over there. And listen, if you can get to your belly, wipe the rest of it right on your belly. Oh, doesn't that feel amazing? So what I wanna tell you is all of our, our oils are that amazing. Every one of our oils have this amazing effect for us. This is why I choose Young Living. This is why I love Young Living. So how you feeling? Feels pretty good, doesn't it? You're loving it, aren't you? So at this point, you know whether you have their interest or not. At this point, they're going to say, uh, unbelievable. My peppermint at home doesn't do this. Here's what I'm going to tell them too. Go ahead and do this. Smell it again. 
You still got it there, don't you? You like it. So they're loving it. They're understanding that they've got something they've never experienced before. You've just shared with them an amazing thing that they're going to want what you have. I know they're going to. Now we're going to show them the PSK. So from there, I take them right over to the PSK. Okay, it's not PSK anymore. It's premium starter bundle, but we're calling it PSK. Okay, Stace, so go ahead and throw out the PSK. You guys remember, still at this point, and I remind them, don't touch your eyes. It'll burn like the Dickens. I'm telling you, don't do it. So I make fun of this depending on the person that I'm dealing with. I'll say, all right, go ahead. You can touch your eyes because it's all right. I don't mind seeing you cry. I will make fun of this. The whole time I'm, I'm, I'm just talking, I'm channeling. I'm just like making it happen. So at this point, I take them right to the premium starter kit. I'm going to show them what they get. That's it. I don't break it down. Not yet, Stace. I don't quite break it down yet. I show them the kit. And if I see that they're interested, then what I do is hand them the PSK flyer. And thank you again to Brittany, Stacy, and Stacy's hu husband, Steve, for making this flyer. This is an amazing item. This is the only piece of literature that I actually use um, to sell the premium starter kit, premium starter bundle. Okay. So um, at this point, I know that I have their attention. They've experienced the, the peppermint. So now they want to know more. Most, most people want to know more. So if I, I know that I have attention enough and I feel that I have the time, I will run through the starter kit right here using this form. This form is hugely important. So the verbiage that I use is what works. Um, I know I wrote in my notes someplace where I've already lost my notes and where they're supposed to be. At some point in my notes, I know that I say, don't say 60% off. People don't want to know they're getting 60% off. They want to know they're getting 60% savings. What a difference. Hmm, 60% off. So I'm still paying 40%. I'm still paying $165. No, you want to tell them you're getting a 60% savings. It's a mental thing. And I realize that, but this is what works. So let me fly through this flyer three with you and show you exactly how I do it. So I point, they've already experienced their peppermint. I've already told them that they're going, that all of our oils are this fantastic. They're amazing. So at this point, I know that I have their confidence because they're standing right next to me, eager to learn. If they weren't, they wouldn't walk with me to be eager to learn. So let's talk about this. The first thing I talk about is Valor. And I de 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 describe all of the oils very quickly. Okay. Valor is awesome for courage. Matter of fact, I put some on today. Panaway, if I have sore knees, I'm going for the Panaway. Peace and calming kind of speaks for itself. Um, frankincense, if you don't know what to do with an oil, you gotta use frankincense thieves. Vitality is pretty amazing. These regular is amazing too, but vitality, you can put it in water, you can adjust it. It's safe, FDA gives us approval. Yes, our FDA allows us to use um, frankincense ingested. All of our vitality line is that. As a matter of fact, let me share with you really quick. Our vitality line and the regular line, they're actually the same oils inside. Huh, who knew? We have to appease the FDA, so that's why we do that. But let's get back. Digize is for any kind of have an upset stomach. Raven, anything you have going on with the chest cold, or, oh, said cold, sorry, didn't mean that. Anytime you have anything going on, um, like sniffles kind of thing. Lavender, that's also amazing. If I want my grandkids to settle down and go night night, we're putting lavender on their feet. Um, stress away, I use stress away before I got on this call for obvious reasons. I use stress away almost daily. Let's see, peppermint, we just experienced that. Peppermint is awesome for the tummy, the head, everything. Remember, it just opened your sinuses. Also citrus fresh and lemon. Anytime you can put a citrus oil in your body, it actually helps it tremendously. It also gets the stickers off the floor. You know, the grand 
take this all over. Unbelievable on how it can take that. Don't use goo gun, it's chemical. You don't want to do that. Just use stress away. I, excuse me, just use um, the lemon or the citrus fresh. We also have our signature product, Ninja Red. You get two single serves of that, which is just a little a single serve. They're awesome. I take this every single day. It's that antioxidants, anti-inflammatory. Hey, by the way, did y'all know we can say anti-inflammatory now? Yeah. Um, and then we also have the three thief sanitizer, hand sanitizer here. When we go up to the desk, I'll give you a, a little bit of that. And then also we have um, the face spray. Anytime you go in a restaurant or your husband goes to the bathroom, you want to use thief spray. Okay. So that's that. So, okay, that is how quickly I go through the PSK. You keeping up with me? Do I help get it? Heidi, you gotta give me a head, uh, thumbs up because you're the only one I can see. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there just for a second. I'm gonna get to the rest of the media, meat of it in, in, in one more minute. But do not, do not, do not, do not. Do not think that you have to tell them every single thing about every single oil that's in the PSK. They're gonna forget nine tenths of what you say anything. The important parts are, oh, I didn't even say this, but the important parts is that it's 60% savings. You rattle off what they get it. And I also say, and by the way, which I'm gonna tell you this next, kind of, I'm gonna wrap it up when I go to the store part. So hang on one minute. I'm gonna to go to the store part because I want, I'm gonna pick this back up in just a second. Okay, <clears throat> so the store, are you guys keeping up? Whew. Going to the store. When I, when I opened the store, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I had decided, I went, went to Canterbury Village on the 4th of July. I decided on the 5th of July, or maybe it was the 6th, but I decided within 24 hours that I was now gonna open a store. Hmm. I think really long about things, don't I? But that's what I did. Uh, and sometimes you just gotta jump the gun and just do what you need to do. So I opened this door. This, the store. The, it doesn't matter what kind of a store you have. Maybe you're a chiropractor office. Maybe you're a massage therapy office. Maybe you're a salt palace. Maybe you're a health food store. The setup and the sale is the same thing. It doesn't matter. When you um, do the process, it's the process. Fall in love with the process. I, I love the process. I, I can't tell you. I get so excited to do the process today as I did several years ago because I understand it. It's not the end result. It's the process. The end result's pretty exciting too, but it's the process each and every time. Stacey's wanting me to get on the drum roll. I'm going to in just a second, Stace. Okay. So here's what we need to know. We need to know that we've greeted them, right? We need to know that they've learned um, wh where their level of interest is. We need to know that we've given them knowledge. We need to know that we have the boundaries because we've, we've asked if they've heard of Young Living Essential Oils or if they've heard of us or whatever the case may be. So we know that there's a boundary there, that their friend, their aunt, their mother, their cousin, whomever, they're not attached to working with them or selling them with them. If they are, we need to make sure that they go with them. But if, if they want to go with you, it's okay. They can go with you. But we need to make those boundaries and make sure that we've established all that. We also have um, figured out that they love the peppermint because they've experienced that. We've gone through the PS, PSB with them. We've created the value. Now is the drum roll. Do, 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 do. What do I say? After I've established on the whole 60% savings, all the oils that you get in it, you get 12 oils, you get the diffuser. The diffuser is an $85 value. You get that in here. This is the only item that Young Living allows us to sell at the 60% savings. It's a $440 retail um, price. We get it for $165. Pretty amazing, isn't that? What do I say? I say, so let's go ahead and get you started. That's it. Really simple. That is all I say. Here's the key guy, guys. Your body language is so important here. You have to 
Be still with your mind, with your mouth. Face body language. You have to be still. You have to step back um, and give them a minute. Most people get anxious. <laughs> back one, Stace. Oops, body language. Nope, forward one. Okay, we'll skip that. Most people get anxious here and they want to start battling. They want to start rattling on. They want that answer for somebody. If you'll note, I didn't ask a question. I said to them, so let's go ahead and get you started. It wasn't a question. Most people want direction. They want you to say, um, tell me what to do next. If you do it aggressively, you'll lose the sale. If you just say it nonchalantly, and as a matter of fact, you'll have the sale. I say it verbatim almost every single time. So let's go ahead and get you started. My body language is very confident. I'm quiet, I'm silent. I am not afraid of that silence. What they are doing is in their mind, they're evaluating is if they trust you, if everything that they said or that you have said and that they have learned um, it relates to them. If they understand it, if the value is there, if they can spend 200, remember they weren't planning on spending almost $200 with you a few minutes ago, but they are now. They are weighing that in their mind. Give them that minute, give them that time of peace. Don't interrupt them, let them enjoy it. That's all, the, you know, people were worried that they're thinking, oh, all these reasons, why not? No, they're probably thinking of all the reasons why they should. You've already explained this to them. They're just confirming with themselves that yes, they are agreeing with you because you told them yes. You shook your head yes when you said, all right, let's go ahead and get you started. They're, they're ready. So what I do at this point is I say that and I go ahead and I, I have their package already prepackaged. I'm ready to go. I bring them over to my desk or I bring them behind my vendor seat and I, I hand them an application and, and key here, I don't wanna throw a red flag, but key here is ask for form of payment. Do not ask for a credit card. Credit card will throw people, even though it's the same difference, credit card will throw people a red flag. Credit card, they'll immediately, they'll go, oh, oh, all of a sudden, the light will come on and go, oh, credit card. I'm spending money that I don't have. No, that's why I asked for form of payment. Form of payment is a gentler way. Then they'll say, oh, you mean credit card? I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Which I will help me want to pay. Yep, credit card is the easiest for me. They're 100% good with it because I didn't create the issue. I've established the trust. I asked for form of payment. That's their choice, whatever form of payment they want. I didn't tell them they had to give me American Express, Visa, MasterCard, whatever the case may be. I let them make that choice. So don't throw a red flag up. Make it easy for yourself. Don't talk after you've done the close or after you've asked for the, or ask, after you've told them that we're going to go ahead and close. Um, one thing that I did leave out here, once you have made that close, once you have actually finalized the whole process, once they have the whole kit in hand, change the subject. Subject. What happens to me usually is like throughout the course of that conversation, maybe they've told me about their kid that's having not heading off to school in September. I'll then start that conversation back up and say, so where is your kid gonna go to school in September? So they'll tell me, here's what, here's what happen, happens. Many people, buyer's remorse will start setting in. Remember, they just spent almost $200 with you. Buyer's remorse may start setting in. Even no matter how excited they are about the situation, it still may set in. So you wanna make sure that you go ahead and change the subject. Try to move them on, maybe go ahead and get them out of um, front of your area or whatever, say goodbye, however you can. It's not that we don't want them there, not that we don't want to continue our conversation with them. We just want to move the conversation from what we had to what we have now, which is, hey, where'd your kids, where is your kid going to school?
Stacy. <coughs> okay, am I saying this last slide? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Uh, oils are our or our oils are amazing and be authentic and truthful when you're sharing with them. So don't exaggerate. We don't need to exaggerate for what they uh, can do, how they work, how we use them. And so just being straightforward, authentic and truthful. And most people can tell, and if they can't tell right then, they're gonna tell at some point if you're exaggerating the truth and find out different things. So it's just the best to be straightforward and honest and just speak truth and not worry about it and be nervous. Like um, you can, I love that Cindy, even though she's not, you know, in the beginning is nervous perhaps about doing this call. We have oils that can help with that. So that's fantastic. And then the more she gets going, you can see she's getting very comfortable. I said, just pretend like you're talking to Heidi or me or whoever, because she has no trouble talking to people. It's just the newity of talking on a screen and, you know, all those different things. So when you're doing a vendor event or a show or in-home class, you know, if you feel confident in sharing this with your mother, your brother, your sister, your best friend, just treat the person the same thing in the same way. And you don't have to, I think the biggest mistake that people have with uh, Young Living, and this is on the same lines, is that you think you have to know everything. And I just always like to remind everyone that Gary Young didn't know everything either, or either. And so, um, you know, we have reference material for that. Um, you don't have to know everything before you go out and share. So if you love it, then use it and then share it, right? Okay, Cindy, let's... Um, stop this screen share real quick, just one second. And then we have a few questions, usually we stop right now, but we will continue. Uh oh, can you guys see the slide or no? My screen is a little funky right now. My computers are not working correctly. Um, we, I need to pull this one back up as soon as I can get back to the screen with you. Let's see, but we have some questions that we're gonna go over and you said you wanted to share, um, I'm gonna pull this back up where we get this stuff from. Oh, make sure that you share this with about Brittany. Yeah. Uh oh, there goes. There you go. Okay. So, <clears throat> all right, you go ahead and talk. Because okay. <coughs> people have questions, and we're gonna extend this call a few minutes so you can answer them. Because right now we're supposed to cut it off. Uh, essentially, Britco is where we get a lot of our flyers and handouts that you can print, and it's even available to put your own member and QR <coughs> codes and that kind of stuff. So I just love this opportunity, beautiful, different things and uh, just great information. So if you're interested, that's the etsy.com shop, essentially Brit Co. Um, and if you didn't know already, Young Living does have a price increase coming in July. So um, just that's gonna need a few minutes to get those flyers updated. I'm sure that first week they'll all be done um, for everyone who uses them already uh, because we need to update them. So the information that Cindy shared today um, with the flyer is still is the best flyer. And we actually made a couple of different flyers to see which way work best. Um, and she chose the design that's out there and she's the one who signs up 14 people at a show or whatever or more. So it's like, um, you know, someone who uh, knows the best way to use this for people. So let's just go through some questions that we have right now. Uh, we'll try to find them. Okay, how to handle the question about the other. So how do you handle questions about other essential oil companies? Oh, that's easy. You know, I, I always say the same thing. You know what, we're not the only good oil company, but we are the best. There's only a few oil companies that are good out there. Make sure that you do your own research. We've been around for 30 years, almost 30 years, and we have our own farms. Nobody else does. That's easy. I, I, I never, ever criticize another oil company. That's not my place. Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> That's not my place. Um, I don't do that. And I just talk positively about what we have. I don't worry about what somebody else has. I, I never have. I only am concerned with what we have. Okay. That. Next one is, do you, uh, what do you call it? Do flip kits, basically, we call them, right? I always flip kits. I flip kits every day. Well, I shouldn't say every day, but I, that's all I do is flip kits. Okay. It's simple. It's simple. People want what they want right now. We are, we are Americans here, so we want that immediate gratification. 
Okay, do you use a computer or a square at your events? I use um, a square. Okay. However, however, my applications are done by hand. All my applications are done by hand. I'm kind of a control person there and I don't like the word control freak, but I'm kind of a control person there. I wanna know that I can um, have total control on that. I want everything written down. I confirm with them everything. Um, I have no problem doing that. Everything I is written out. You give them a photocopy or send them a picture and send it to them? Um, I have them take a picture if, if they choose. And, and when they do that, when they take their own picture, here's another way to confirm with them that you are trustworthy. I take a pen and I set it right on the um, credit card numbers. So they're like, oh, oh my goodness, I'm taking a picture with my own. This is what they're saying. I'm taking a picture with my own phone and yet you're still covering up those credit card numbers. They don't technically say that, but you see it in their eyes. So they know they can trust you. Does that make sense? Yes. What if uh, some people don't want to use their credit cards? What do you say then? Cash is fine. We're, we're allowed, we are allowed to put the first one in. You cannot keep, um, you ha you'll have to call it in, otherwise your credit card will be left on account for three months. Um, but we are allowed to do the first order. You are not allowed to have your credit card on uh, a such rewards order or whatever. So how do you get that off then or what do you, what's the process? Oh, uh, you call it in. You don't, you call it into member services and, and tell them one time use only. Okay. They will and not leave your credit card on file. If you do it online yourself, it will remain on there for three months. Okay. Okay. Let's just go through here. Um, Let's see, generating two stuff. Okay. Uh, the recording will be on Grow by Friday, both of their calls. So, uh, Cher Cherry said, I can't wait to her next vendor event. So she says, Thank you. Um, Just don't be afraid to ask, you guys, or make your statements. It's not even an ask. And, it, and if you're not comfortable yet putting in the statement phrase, then ask. Just say, So, you ready to get started? It's real simple. Most people don't succeed on that because they're afraid to ask or they're afraid to make the statement. What are they gonna tell you? No, I'm not quite ready yet. Well, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Just don't be afraid to ask. I've had people say, well, you know, I didn't even know that she was doing it. She never said anything to me. So if, if, we, don't, if we don't present ourselves as the salesperson, somebody else is going to. We are salespeople. This is what we do. Uh, we are partners. I want to make a living on here. Otherwise, I have to go back in the restaurant business. I don't want to do that. That was hard work. This is hard work in a different way. This, this, this is, this I'm for seven because I love it. It doesn't have to be. I could, you know, do it a few hours a day or a few hours a week, but this is what I love. So this is what I do all the time. This is what my passion is. This is what I enjoy. Fall in love with the process. As soon as you fall in love with the process, you'll get the results. Okay. Um, Kathy asks, if they want to purchase $100 or, or more, sign them up and have the products sent to their address. Oh, I think she was answering someone else's okay, question. So, so since we've had that change, here's what I tell people when they come in. Okay, so maybe they're not really interested in giving the kit or any of the kits, any of the bundles, I don't care. So I tell them real simply, purchase 125 retail, you'll get it for 100 today. We wanna break it down, bring it down to the lowest common denominator, 125, retail, you'll get it for a hundred today. Real simple. Don't say, well, if you buy this and you buy that, and this is 25% this is of blah, blah, blah. Don't do that to them. Tell them, go spend 125. I'll give it to you for a hundred. There's your sign up. 
it's so easy now. Before we did, remember before we did have to find, uh, we did have to sell the kits. We don't have to anymore, 125 retail, 100 wholesale. Okay, although we do have the kits available, we have 12 that we can sell and then someone, you do get at least through August, right? Okay, so let, let, me, let, me, let me reiterate here. The number one thing I sell though is the PSK to this day. And I probably will, and here's why. I'm always looking to give the person the best value. Again, 60% savings on the PSK, there is not a better value in our whole wholesale pricing than the PSK. I'm always trying to give that person the best, the best deal. So PSKs are the number one thing that I do sell. Okay, let's keep going. I know there's more questions. Hold on, I just lost my spot here. Stacy, lots of people are asking what the flip kit concept is. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, we have the PSK. Does everyone knows what the premium starter bundle is, PSB? So it is, Stace, can you put that slide back up maybe? So I, I have purchased one and I have it, I have it here. I actually have more than one, but when they purchase it, when they want to purchase a kit I give them that kit and I tell them right then you're going to get it you're going to get an email from Young Living and it's going to say your kit has processed what this kit is doing is being shipped to me you're taking my kit yours is being shipped to me that's how I keep my supplies fresh they're going oh okay then I'll remind them don't forget your kit is being shipped to me the same exact thing does that answer it clear? That's I can't see. It does or doesn't. I, oops, I can't see the comments, so I don't know if that's answering it. Heidi, good. Thank you, Heidi. Okay, let's go back over here. Yeah, if we haven't answered your question, please put it in right now, and then they'll be easier. I'm trying to go through all these, it's difficult. Uh, has anyone ever canceled their order? Yes. Um, it's been very, very rare, but yes, it has happened. Um, I also have had times where maybe someone's credit card didn't go through. So I called them and I have repeatedly called them until I finally get through to them. And maybe I wrote the number down wrong. Maybe they wrote the num number down wrong. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. We just want to get it resolved. And almost, almost always, it's a simple thing. Of, it was a seven, not a nine. It was a nine, not a seven. Almost always, it was a, a simple mistake. Remember, we've already established trust from the get-go. I have rarely, matter of fact, back in the day when we had to ask for social security numbers, I've rarely had anyone say no. That's where that's where it's so important. When someone comes to your table, do not pretend like you're not there to sell. Red flags go off. You have established this trust. We want to stay with establishing trust. That happens from the moment they walk up to that table. Okay, a couple of things. Oh, uh, I'm not sure if you just answered this because I was answering someone else's question. But it says, do you mean by application? So you actually have a form that we have that I know Brittany has on her thing where it's an application with the starter kits, which has got to be updated, obviously, with the new prices come out. So give it like a good week. That's an application that has the members' information. They pick what kit, what they want. And so you do it all by hand on paper. I do it all by hand on paper. Yes. Okay. Always. Um, when you're signing someone up with, or excuse me, let me start over. If someone is buying your extra Young Living products, like they want a lemon and a thieves and a peppermint, let's say, I think this is what the question is from Kathy. Do you sign them up when uh, they buy your stash? So the other Young Living products that you have there as well, you're signing yeah. them up. Okay. <laughs> they spent 125, I'm signing them up. Actually today you can sign them up for less than that, but my, my goal is always the 125 so I can get it to them for hundred. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. That was my question, Stacy. thank you. Okay, good. Um, and so good. And so do you, do you buy all those flip kits at one shot? 
Um, I, you know, I, it's really a difficult question to ask because I've always done flip kit kits. So I you wouldn't buy. You just don't buy 20 right now or do you? I, I probably have, I don't know. Heidi probably has four or five of them. I have them. I don't, I don't know how many flip kits I had. I'd have to go look in my store and, and count it out. Okay. So I probably keep an average of 15 flip kits. So someone has asked me before, because I did it before, and then our, our stuff changes. So what? It's still the best deal. I'm still getting $440 worth of stuff for $165. It's still the best deal. Right. So am I concerned that they're going to change the kits? It's an inconvenience. But I know I'm the best deal. Do you give out samples um, of the products? So THC or, or these? Oh, well, I do not give out samples to go. If you want to use my stuff, you're using them right here with me, period. I know our, I know our stuff is going to give you a response right this minute. Why do I need to send it home with you? I don't. I did two um, CBD orders yesterday. Uh, I had two people come in uh, and that, here's why, how I do it. Here, let me give you a little bit of this. Give me your shoulder, rub it on their shoulder. I take deep relief out, put it on top. I tell them I like this to put it on top because I like it to penetrate deeper, holds it longer. Done deal. Um, peppermint, do the same thing. So I don't send samples home. I don't, I don't personally. You want to taste my ninja red because you're afraid you don't won't like it. I'm okay with that. I'll probably give you a little bit, but you're going to have it here at my store. Most of the time, I don't even do that. But okay. again, I've established trust. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are asking about the forms. So I just put the link in there twice. Uh, so you can go to the chat and I, find it. the one that I use or the one you use, because we don't use the same form. Remember, I use plain and simple. Okay. Uh, so there's a plain and simple form and there's a form in the links as well. The yeah. best place to search for vendor events, Peggy asked, Peg asked. All right, so the ones that I've done, I've done for many years. I am um, pretty established in them. They're, they're long-term vending. Just, just start going, checking them out. Go in and look yourself. Look online, you'll see local vending um, and get to know the promoter. That is the key to having a successful show also is to get to know the promoter. I know all the good promoters. Those are the people who are running those shows because I was a good customer for them. I didn't give them a hard time. I wasn't demanding, I was gracious. I was on time. I never packed up early. I always, I always set up on well on time. Um, I stayed late. I followed the rules basically, and then some. So my promoters loved working with me. Heidi has it easy. She didn't have to establish that. But if Heidi would have gone in there and been not nice, they would have booted her out in a heartbeat. Heidi went in with the right attitude. If you go in thinking, thinking that um, I'm paying you to be here, so you have to treat me like this, or you get an attitude, or the show didn't work for you this time, that's the wrong attitude. Go in, look at the place, and see if it's a fit for you, because it's got to be a fit for you, first of all. Go in, make sure it's a fit. If it's a fit for you, get a booth there. It may cut, take a couple times before you get it down and before it becomes your place. But after a bit like everything else, you'll be, you'll be one of the vendors. It's a really, it's a really tight niche, those, that vendor stuff. Like, they're, like you, you talk about restaurant people being gossipy within themselves, vendor people are the same way. Every group of people maybe is the same way. And it's, it's not just a representation of yourself. It's a representation of Young Living, which then That's gives Young Living a bad name. Right. Um, someone asked, like, how many starter kits would you bring uh, for a show? So I guess there's big shows and small shows. So how would you figure out how many you should bring depending on what show? I think the, 
depending on where you live. So let's say that you live um, 45 minutes from the show. So you go, most likely you're not staying the night at the show. So you're probably going to just bring four kits. Four. Um, you can pick up more kits tomorrow, right? No big deal. If I'm doing a vendor show that's an hour plus away, I'm going to take every kit I have. And if that's eight or 12 kits, I'm taking those. Whatever I can fit in my car. Don't so fine, whatever you can fit, take it. Um, Vivian asked, what about sales tax? Sales tax are required. Sales tax are required to be paid. You are responsible for your sales tax. So do you pay them or do you charge them? Uh, Young Living charges them. So when I'm doing a when I'm doing a starter kit, when I'm doing a PSK, they are getting they're, they're getting charged from Young Living, not from me. If I'm doing the show and I'm selling um, a deep relief, and if I'm selling a deep relief, I am charging tax on that, and I am paying those tax. So I'm charging and I'm paying. Okay. Uh, Peggy asks, what do you uh, sell products for, retail or wholesale, if only retail. buying one or two things? Um, I don't just buy one or two things, but if you, if you, and I get it, not everybody can have three or four, six or 12 of something, that's okay. If you can only do two, just do two. You're buying for retail, you're buying for wholesale, you're selling for retail. If they want wholesale pricing, every once in a while I'll do a discount. But, but if you want, if, like I'll do a show and say, you know, a percentage off, that's okay. But a percentage off what? Remember, we cannot sell. We have to sell for wholesale plus 10%. And I stay within that guideline. So um, you earn the difference. It's not a lot of difference. So my goal is never to earn just the income between hotel, wholesale to retail. My goal is to sign up. Okay, so if you're giving them, I'm just reading this at the same time, so I'm not really thinking here. Uh, but if you're giving them a flip kit, the sales tax has to be included, correct? It is included. It's 165. And there for a while, we didn't have to pay shipping and handling, and then we have, but we had to pay sales tax. But now it is 184.97 again, I believe. So it is included. But remember, I'm not running their card on my square. I am writing that information down and, and, and signing them in tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I still have two that I didn't do yet. I, I am, Young Living is, they're being charged from Young Living. They're not being charged from my square. I'm taking the application, I'm going home and I am, I am um, signing them up. With the flip kit, they will open an account with Young Living. So it answers yes. Correct. They don't mind giving their credit card info. Cindy, how fast have you gotten someone's credit card information to sign them up? How, how many minutes? That I don't know. Well, you've already told me before. I, just I, I don't like know. you've signed people up in five minutes. Is that correct? Yeah. In five minutes. She's got what kit they're getting, their name, their address, their credit card with no problems. And I know from experience, I used to have a problem with this as well, especially when you have to ask for socials, which we don't even have to do anymore. But I had them going with all whatever. And then <coughs> I, like, I didn't want to ask about the social because a lot of people didn't want to do it back today. And my whole body language changed. Everything changed. I'm like, well, I'm sorry. And we need your social security number. And then they're like, what? Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. You know. And so I'd save the worst thing for me last, <clears throat> right? And so when I started not worrying about it and changing that, and somebody said, just ask for it first. And you, you have to give it to go to Sam's Club for Costco, which we don't have to do those things anymore. But of course they have to pay for it. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? So if you have a hesitation in your voice or the body language changes, you have to realize that that's your issue and they're picking up on your concerns or issue. Like they're like, dang, is she shy shysty? Like, why is she concerned about asking it? So. You definitely have to have the confidence. Just go ask all your family for their credit card numbers for a minute. You know, they don't have to give them to you, but ask somebody so you can help feel comfortable asking those questions. Okay, let's go back again because I don't use credit card. I use form of payment. Huge That's, difference. Oh yeah. Huge. Look at, I love it. I see three people shaking their head yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Form of payment. How do you know that you 
And shaking your head yes is so important too. We like we look at that lightly. Body language is huge. If you continue to shake your head yes, people will agree with you. They just naturally will. You shake yeah. your head no, you're gonna go, oh, you're right. Yeah, I know I am. Liz has a fabulous <laughs> question. I know this just recently happened because we talked about this. So Liz, uh, if we had a prize, you would get one today. So how do you know um, Young Living has charged them when someone signs up because now you have to verify their email and set up a password for the link? You just had that issue happen, did you? Okay, okay, okay. So ho hold up a minute. There, if someone just had that happen recently, that hasn't established yet, that was a mistake. It wasn't supposed to happen yet. We got that corrected, it was all in one day. Now, if that's not what you're talking about, um, it's okay. This is our future one with signups. They're not quite ready to establish that, uh, to launch that program yet. But um, we, no matter what we do, we will have to have the correct information, right? Young Living will always work with us to help us get that taken care of. So, um, the day I think that you're talking about, I also signed up someone and then I called Young Living. As a matter of fact, Karen McCarthy was signing up someone at the same time. And we realized that we couldn't go any further because they were asking for um, the email confirmation on it. And so we, we, we couldn't do anything. That program got launched accidentally. They are fixing that. They are, they've already taken that out. Now, unless it's been put back in within this last week, I'm unaware of it. You said it just happened today, and I wrote oh. down her name, her name, so we can get a hold of her. Okay, let let let's do that because that was not supposed to happen yet. They are they are they're working with launching this program, and um, they don't have the details worked out yet. Liz, uh, can you please uh, message me privately your phone number, and then uh, I'll give it to Cindy because she's working someone directly with the Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, there's so many questions in here. So fantastic information. Everyone's loving this call. I'm so ex excited that we um, talked you into this because obviously uh, this is very valuable information. So listen to this as many times as possible because while Cindy is special and a great friend, Anyone can do this. And yes. just about having the right mindset, uh, not having any reservations or fears and using the right verbiage, right? Yes, and, absolutely. You know, and not being on your phone. She won't even let someone come sit near her at her booth if you have a phone. Like, nope. she's very serious. So it's very important. And ever since she mentioned that, now I just see people and they're like, oh, they're not even aware of what's going on in the spatial area around you. Uh, when you come up to the booth, I sort of tend to do the same thing too. So it's sort of interesting. But okay, so this uh, confidence, Danette said, thank you so much. And remember, this will be on Grow at the end of, uh, by, or by Friday, by the end of this week. And so you can listen to this as many times as you want. And just thank you so much for coming to Monday Night Ignite. And thank you, Cindy. And please make sure you share these calls out with your friends. They can come on as well. Um, to, we have the health class always from seven uh, to eight and eight to nine. Usually we went a little over tonight, but great information. Uh, we have the business information. So thank you all. Have a blessing. And Cindy, everyone's just saying thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.